Welcome to Knit Together with Kim and Donna. I'm Donna and Kim is on vacation. So I am going to try and drive this boat by myself. <laughs> um, you know, when someone else is podcasting with you, you have time to think when they're talking. So, you know, that's not going to be the case today. So she said, you know, make sure there's plenty of bloopers. I was like, I don't think there's going to be a problem with bloopers. So anyway, um, yeah, so this is one of our mini sews I'm filming here in my house. This is our little studio, my yarn uh, collection back there and sewing machines over there and baby set up over there for my grandson. So yeah, kind of a multi-purpose room. Um, my husband is home working in the other room and my dad's uh, around somewhere. So we'll see how this goes. I thought about putting a little like recording sign on the door. I might do that. Um, yeah, so if you are a new viewer, this is not... Uh, a typical episode, usually Kim's sitting next to me and we're both sharing. This is one of our mini shows. They tend to be a little bit more topical in our regular episodes, which I encourage you to go back and watch. Uh, we talk about, you know, what we're wearing, what we're knitting, what we want to knit, and we chat and, you know, this and that. So they're a lot of fun. And we film those at Pick Up Every Stitch, which is our local yarn shop. Um, this is a Thursday morning. And later on today, we are going to have another Mayak Isabel Kramer Cal knit night on Zoom. So we're looking forward to that. Um, yeah, so today I just thought I'd talk to you about my sweater collection. So I'm a relatively new knitter, and by that I mean maybe four-ish years. Um, so my knitwear collection is not just about sweaters it's really a journey it's really about you know my first sweater what I um what I was learning what I wanted to what I wanted to learn what I was inspired by um sometimes what I wanted to wear <laughs> so it's been this whole kind of journey um especially because I'm a process knitter and it's not for me always about the finished object so I know that's that sounds odd but I think because I am a bit of a researcher, um, you know, curious and, you know, always wanting to learn something new, knitting really for me has been um, an interesting journey. So a little bit about me, if I, and I may have said this in a previous episode, but I worked as an editorial uh, mathematician for most of my life. So I worked in academic publishing. Um, my undergrad was in math, so I helped write textbooks and things of that nature. Um, and then I went to grad school much later in life for epidemiology and dropped out after a year and a half, which was kind of a bummer. So anyway, but my dad wasn't, uh, my dad wasn't well, so I wanted to be sure that I had plenty of time for him. So knitting was sort of my, you know, post-grad school uh, hobby and actually what helped me kind of get over that grieving process of leaving school. Um, and you know, I met a bunch of friends and I love the culture. So yeah, that's kind of how my knitting journey began. Um, yeah, well, I don't want to blather on too much. I might blather at the end. So let's get into the knitting. Um, it's not quite elevens is here. So I'm still drinking my black tea from this morning. Oh, in my favorite sheet mug from Vermont Sheep and Wool that my friend Claudia bought for me for my birthday. So yeah, we went up there a couple years ago. It was really fun. All right. So I have a huge stack of sweaters here. And this isn't really all the sweaters I've made because I've gifted a lot of them. If you want to know what I'm wearing, I'm wearing the Salty Air Tea by Samantha Guerin. And I'll put it in the show notes below, all the details and stuff. So, and hopefully we'll put some timestamps in here too. So you don't have to listen to too much chatter. Um, I'm also wearing a new to me... Um, not perfect linen skirt, city skirt, the 1950 city skirt, I think it's called. So this is maybe my fourth one and I just love them. They're easy to wear. They go with my, you know, cropped knits and yeah, I can't recommend them enough. And I buy those on Etsy, but I'll link that below too. All right. So of course, now that I look at these stacks, they're not in the right order. So I'm going to have to pull from the bottom. So, um, the first sweater I made, and this is one of my recommendations about first sweaters, uh, which is to make a baby sweater. 
So this was a sweater for my uh, granddaughter, Eleanor. And this is the V for Vivi pattern. And yeah, it had no ribbing. So you just cast on and set up for the raglan increases with stitch markers. And this was the first sweater I ever did make ones. I, I learned a lot by making this sweater. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I was still purling um, by wrapping my yarn clockwise instead of counterclockwise at this point, but there's not a lot of purling in here, so it didn't really matter, which is a whole other story in itself um, about my purling journey, <laughs> which is still ongoing. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend for your first sweater to make a baby sweater just because, you know, it's it's instant gratification. It comes together quickly. It's a small project. If you have to rip back, it's not tragic. Um, yeah, I really loved this pattern. This is um, out of a super wash. I can tell it's a super wash. I think it's periwinkle sheep wool that was dyed specially um, for pick up every stitch in, in their color, their Mount, Mount Kisco color, I think. Yeah, so that was a fun little knit and I really, really recommend the pattern. So that was sweater number one. And then I thought, well, I want a sweater. I want a grown up sweater. And I was really, I really love petite knit. So they make some of my favorite, favorite patterns. Very classic, love her aesthetic. So this is the Sunday sweater by Petite Knit, as I said. And this was my first adult sweater. And I absolutely loved it. I loved the process. I loved the pattern. I thought it was really easy to understand. And this pattern probably calls for a fingering weight plus um, a mohair, so to make like a DK weight. And fortunately for me, Felicia helped me pick out some yarn. This is um, Amelie. The yarn is Amelie by, hmm, drawing a blank at the moment. Um, yeah, I'll put it in the show notes below. But this is a, a blown yarn in a tube and it's fuzzy. So I got the look of holding mohair with only holding one strand of yarn. So this was a fantastic choice. I was very grateful that, you know, she helped me pick up out something that was appropriate that I, that I liked. So yeah, I was a little nervous about holding two strands together. And the sleeves are uh, wide enough where I didn't have to use DPNs. I probably used a small circular. They're kind of balloony. The only trouble I remember having on this is I had to take it in because my bind off was too tight, which is, you know, definitely a rookie mistake. One that I still make frequently. Um, yeah, so someone had to help me unpick the bind off, which was not easy, especially in this dark fuzzy yarn. But fortunately, I got some help and uh, bound off, probably went up a couple needle, needle sizes and just did a traditional bind off. I've learned a lot about bind offs since, um, since I made this sweater. And I'm checking out the armpits here. Oh, not too bad. <laughs> I think I made this on wooden needles. Yeah, and it's one of my favorite sweaters. I actually just sewed down the, the collar, which is how the pattern um, wants you to have the neckline, but it was kind of a mock turtleneck for a long time, but I decided I wanted to sew it down finally. So yeah, I lo absolutely love this sweater. It was a, it was a great success. I'm not sure I even swatched. I don't know if they made me swatch a pick of every stitch. Maybe they did. Um, because you know, it fit and you know, as far as mistakes, they were fixable and I ended up with a garment that I really, you know, was really wearable. So, you know, then my knitting career was just, you know, just took off after that. Oh, I was pretty much obsessed actually with just learning the craft. So let's see. Um, and I think my next sweater was actually Soldatna. Um, this is probably my second adult sweater. And this is a Soldatna pattern by Caitlin Hunter. And it's super popular pattern, absolutely gorgeous color work. Um, all over the body, in fact. So, yeah, this is my first color work. Actually, that's not true. I actually made a Pokemon ball. Um, and Karen at Pick Up Every Stitch helped me figure out how to do the color work on this Poke Pokemon ball. <laughs> and then I think I jumped right into Oliver Color Work Sweater Knitting. So this is um, Santi by Ilamani, this yarn. 
and it's got silk in it and some yak and it's really drapey gorgeous colors um, this sweater was a little on the small side and I think that's probably because I should have gone up a needle size because of the color work it's a little bit um, the color work is definitely pulling here in the yoke I mean it looks okay but I think if I were to make this today I probably would go up a needle size um, and maybe even um, a pattern size. I usually knit the size two of most patterns. This is really cropped, probably because I wanted to get it off the needles like ASAP so I could wear it. Um, and also a lot of her patterns tend to be pretty cropped because she wears these, um, you know, these high-waisted linen skirts. So this was a really fun knit. I would really recommend this if you want to get uh, color work a try. Really fun. In fact, I told this story. I was in the parking lot at Costco in Brookfield, Connecticut, and I hear this woman um, yell across the parking lot, I love your soldatna. So that was really fun. <laughs> A fellow knitter. And this is soldatna, I think, number two. And I made this for my daughter, Laura, actually. And I absolutely love my color choices. Um, and that's another thing, I think, as kind of an inexperienced knitter, was, you know, where to where to place my yarns, make sure I had enough contrast. But I love that this one is it's high contrast, but also sort of monochromatic because there's two colors of brown and um, the gray and then the ivory. And I made this out of Blue Sky Fibers Baby Alpaca. So this is really drapey too. Um, and I love to wear this. It's a, I think I made the size three for her. And my color work is definitely a little bit, uh, you know, my tension is a little bit better. So, and you can see the inside. This is a really fun knit. I would love to make another one of these now that I'm a little bit um, more accomplished knitter, shall we say. So, yeah, this is a great choice. Kim is actually making one of these soon with yarn kit that she bought from Kristen from Bullenbein, uh, Bullenbein Yarns. So that is going to be absolutely stunning. I cannot wait to see it. Um, let's see. And then we have the ever popular Ranunculus sweater. And this was a really fun knit. Large needles. Um, I made this out of Mono Still Uruguay Fino, which is a silk blend. And it's felted actually because I, I don't know, I think it snuck into the, into the wash, but it was so big that it actually fits fine still. So it is just a little bit less open. Um, and this was a really fun knit and this really got us started on, well, me started on my ranunculus kick. So I think I've made, oh, I don't know, nine maybe, um, a great gift knit because it goes so fast. I think this is really doable in about four days if you stick with it. I held mohair with this one, so this might have been my first holding uh, yarn double uh, knit. And you can see that there's a little bit of pooling in the body, which I didn't really know what pooling was, um, but it's fine. I think it's, it's a pretty color and it all just kind of blends in together um, in hindsight. I might have used helical knitting or um, alternated skeins. Maybe. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> uh, maybe Kim can put a link to our ranunculus episode up here so you can click on that. So we talk about all the ranunculi or ranunculuses that we have made. So definitely a fun knit and I've made a lot of them. I think there's a couple, there's at least two more in the stack. So yeah. Great sweater, still wear it, love the color. All right, so we gotta get into some crazy color work here. This is another pattern by Caitlin Hunter. This is the Koivua. And I bought the yarn for this at New, uh, Vermont Sheep and Wool where I got my mug. Here, I'll have a sip of tea. Um, didn't really have an idea what I was gonna use this for. This is Cumbria by the Fiber Co. Now that I'm saying that, I'm thinking I did not buy this at Vermont Sheep and Wool because I think I'm using that yarn for my Aleppo. 
<laughs> okay, I bought this at Pick of Every Stitch. And this is Cumbria by the Fiber Co. And this is a non super wash woolly wool. And the color work is done in Fiederbrook Farm Entropy DK, which is one of those color changing yarns uh, similar to Spin Cycle. So I think the pattern itself uh, suggests that you use Spin Cycle for the color work, but I love it. I love how the color changes. That said, I had to do some serious like yarn management to get the sleeves to be, um, you know, around the same color as this um, part of the body underneath the sleeves. So I split for the sleeves, you know, knit this color work, finished the bottom, and then had to go back and pick up for the sleeves. So I went through my skein of yarn to see, um, you know, if I could find where it started to be brown here. Oop, there's probably a hole in my underarm there, huh? Um, this is a really fun, fun pattern because if you're not working color work, you're working textured stitches. So there's knits and pearls that create this texture. The arms are pretty, uh, have a lot of volume. So easy to knit on uh, circular needles and an I-cord bind off here at the sleeve. And I actually wore this to Rhinebeck, my first Rhinebeck. Um, all this said, I do feel a little self-conscious in this sweater. I mean, now that I'm looking at it on camera, it looks gorgeous, but it's a little out there for me. And actually I make, made a mistake in the color work. I think you can see right here, these little guys are missing their little feet. So somehow I didn't get off pattern and didn't notice which is fine. I don't really have a problem with that. But I am thinking about over dyeing this with some charcoal gray writ dye because I really don't wear it, you know, um, which is a shame. It's absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And I, I loved the pattern and I highly suggest um, if you want a potato chippy knit that you cannot put down, this is your knit. Fits well, it's cropped, it's warm gorgeous wool. So I don't know. I have the dye. I haven't done it partly because I'm not really sure how that's all going to work, but yeah, I, I think I might give it a try. This has, this sweater has been pretty pilly. Um, I haven't blocked it, it, you know, washed it very much, but this yarn was definitely pilly. So that was another thing I learned was like, wait, Yarn pills? Oh my goodness, after I spent all this money and time, what do I, what do, I do now? <laughs> so, um, I don't know if, so here in the States, I think you can play it all over the world, but the New York Times has a game called Wordle. And because this will air after today, I can tell you that today's Wordle was Glean, G-L-E-A-N. And I purchased a gleaner so that I could take the pills off my mitts. So I thought that was pretty funny. Now, this is a colorwork sweater that I absolutely love, and I do not feel um, self-conscious in this one at all. I think because the colors are a little bit more muted, it's probably more in my, my color scheme. Um, I bought this wool at, oh, not great armholes. I bought this wool at Rhinebeck, and it is Nash Island Tide. Oh. I'm trying to think who the yarn manufacturer is. Um, and this is the Lunenberg Pullover by Amy Christophers, who also made the Felix Pullover that I'll show you in a little bit. This color work, it, it really looks a lot like um, the Bohu Stickning style of knitting, which it is not. There are some pearl stitches in the color work, but not so many, you know, that it was um, difficult. And no more than two colors per row, I believe. That said, I think I'm wrong. It's possible there were th a couple, three color rows. But you know what, I was still, you know, learning at this point, so it was totally doable. Again, I used some helical knitting here on the body, and you know, you can see a little bit of color variation, but I wouldn't say that there was pooling, but this is definitely hand-dyed yarn. And I would definitely uh, recommend um, helical knitting or um, using two skeins of 
yarn to to use the Nash Island tie, which is um, grown in Maine, I think, on an island. And so the sheep are raised there, the yarn is uh, milled there. It's very local to us here on the East Coast. Um, gorgeous woolly wool, very sticky. In fact, <laughs> this is a funny story. I'll turn it inside out. I wore this to Vogue Knitting Live in early 2020. And that was when I met Andrew and Andrea of Fruity Knitting. And I'm wearing this sweater in the picture I took with them. But I didn't want to weave in my ends. And so before they were trimmed here, I had this like huge like yarn monkey was like sitting on my shoulder. And I mean, I could feel it, but you really couldn't see it. But I, it had felt it enough just from wear that I just snipped the yarn ends, didn't even weave them in, and there you go. So the joys of woolly wool and sticky yarn. So I absolutely love the colors. Kim is actually going to make one of these too. I think she bought yarn at Rhinebeck to make one from Green Mountain Spinnery. So yeah, that'll be gorgeous. So yeah, this is like sweatshirty. I just throw it on. It's super warm. It's super light. This is, um, I believe, a woolen spun yarn. And it's just, it's one of my, it's, it's one of my great accomplishments, I think. It just looks gorgeous. And I get stopped every time I wear this. And it's blue. So there you go. All righty. Um, let's move on to, oh, and this is one of my favorite sweaters. So this is Hohe Locatelli's Super Simple Summer Sweater. And this is not a summer sweater. This is made out of Mayak Medium, which is 100% yak uh, that is from Tibet, but milled in Italy. And it is absolutely gorgeous yarn. And I have to say that it is so incredibly soft. There's zero itch vector and absolutely zero pilling because of the way they mill the yarn, the way they spin the yarn. Not a pill on this sweater ever. I have worn this over and over and over again. It's very sweatshirty. It has a split hem, which was fun. I didn't execute that as well as I could have, but it's fine. One side's a little bit better than the other. <laughs> I love the colors I chose. I loved the yarn. I thought that this pattern was was good. I did make, so I pretty much made the whole sweater and then had to frog it because it was way too big. I was like, why am I using so much yarn? Um, so I went down a needle size and I think I went down a size, a pattern size. So I think I made the extra small. And I don't know if this has been fixed in the pattern. I don't know if it's been updated since, but if you make the extra small, you end up increasing right at a color change, which becomes very obvious. So I had to do some little fudging on where I did my increases because I didn't want, you know, it to show especially since I used black, you know, such high contrast colors. Um, that, and I think there was a mistake in the pattern. And it's possible that's why um, my split here isn't as neat as it could be. But absolutely, highly recommend. Would be awesome in a summer yarn, linen. I bought this to pick up every stitch also. Yeah, this is absolutely one of my favorite sweaters. And I love the way that the cuffs are finished. There's a little bit of... Um, there's definitely ribbing, but there's a little bit of a pearl stitch here at the end that makes, you know, kind of some texture. Really, really great sweater. Highly recommend, would love to make another one. All right, so I think I have these ones in the right order. <laughs> this was my first cardigan. And this is cardigan number seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And this was, I actually saw this sample at Pick Up Every Stitch, and it's knit in Isair Alpaca 2. Oh, there goes the garage door. Sorry about that. Um, so this was a lot of back and forth knitting, and by this time I had figured out how to purl so that my stitches were not twisted. I learned that on my Andrea Mowry shawl, which I'm not going to show any accessories today. But, yeah, so I'll tell you the story now. I learned to knit from my grandmother when I was probably seven or eight and she had two daughters so my mom and my aunt and my mom doesn't knit but my aunt does and the other day I thought well if grandma taught my aunt and she taught me 
then we must both have learned to purl with our yarn going clockwise. So all of our stitches would be twisted. So I asked her to send me a little video of her purling. And sure enough, she was purling. So I call it kind of like a sweeping purl and it goes really fast. So I was so curious, you know, why are, you know, do you knit through the back loop then? And she said, yes. So this whole mystery of why I was purling um, and twisting my stitches, you know, finally made sense. I felt like I was like part of a club and that, you know, I hadn't just made some random stitch up and that, you know, I was making all these mistakes. So anyway, that is my little purling story. And I'm still trying to learn how to tension my yarn better so that I can improve my speed because my purl rows are dreadfully slow. So anyway, that said, this was done on really big needles and actually went pretty quickly. And I, I love it. This is my like, you know, the, the glories of cardigans that you can just throw on and throw, you know, take off when you get too warm. Big sleeves, no DPNs, no magic looping. Um, and I held this one with mohair also. This was um, a Sanis Garn tin silk mohair with the East Air Alpaca 2 and really comfortable holes. I did manage to improve that as time went on. <laughs> My last few sweaters, I told somebody the other day, I'm like, I have really nailed the armpits on my last few sweaters. Like it took me a while, but I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos, which is how I really, you know, I, my grandma taught me how to knit, but I didn't really pick up knitting, like I said, until I was, you know, early fifties and YouTube was my friend. Like I didn't even know that yarn stores really taught knitting and I didn't know about pick up every stitch in Mount Kisco until Kim told me. So I learned really on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I don't even know what I can say about this except for it's pretty basic cardigan, raglan increases. Um, I can't remember now. I think I had to pick up for the button band. So you don't knit the button band as you go. You have to pick up for it, which actually I think I did like six times because I just couldn't get the right number of stitches. But um, now I'm not as, you know, if the pattern, you know, suggests you get 300 and... 80 stitches or whatever. I'm not crazy about that anymore. So just as long as I'm picking up kind of the right ratio and the right number of stitches in the same places, um, I don't worry about it so much. Uh, so the only change I made on this, I actually made a second one for my daughter in um, Kama Rose Snefnug, which is an awesome yarn, I highly recommend, that I buy online at the Yarnery, which is a yarn, an online, they have a brick and mortar store also. I think it's in one of the M states, like Minnesota, I think, Michigan. Anyway, I'll put that in the show notes too, but I did want to talk a little bit about my favorite online yarn shops, and that is one of them because they sell Kama Rose, and I recently bought some Loved Hand from them, also by Kama Rose, which is 100% linen yarn, which I absolutely cannot wait to use. I was going to grab it for you. Oh yeah, here it is. But I cannot decide on a pattern. I've talked about making the Tulip Guernsey by Midori Hirose. Um, this ball has seen better days. But yeah, this is, it's just got a beautiful sheen to it. And it's a beautiful color blue. And it, I think it's just going to make a stunning garment. So I have not committed. Um, and I have half a mind to just make it ridiculous. Because I know it would be absolutely stunning. I know it would be a quick knit. And summer is wasting away here. Um, that said, it's been like over 100 almost every day. Today's a little bit better. Um, oh, and I was going to tell you, so I made another one of these for my daughter. And the only thing I did was add some short rows in the back of the sweater right above the ribbing. And I followed some directions by Susan B. Anderson of Barrett Wool Co. And I followed her instructions about adding short rows right above the ribbing in the back of the sweater. And it worked like a charm, and I would definitely do that again if I made another one. So yeah, absolutely love this cardigan. All right, what else do we have? Oh, we have another ranunculus. So this is fun. I made a couple of these, actually. And this is out of the Illimani Sabri 2, which is an alpaca and wool blend that is drapey. It's lightweight. Oh, no, I want to say cotton and alpaca. Sorry, cotton and alpaca. 
it's a worsted weight and it just made a beautiful ranunculus. I wear this all the time, um, really only in the summer though, with a linen skirt or linen pants. And I may have added some lengths to this, to the body here. The pattern suggests you only knit about uh, 10 centimeters or four inches. Actually, no, this looks pretty much to pattern and three inches of ribbing. Um, so this one's pretty, pretty cropped. <laughs> Even my daughters don't wear sweaters as cropped as I wear them, but I think I'm pretty short-waisted, so, and I wear high-waisted bottoms, so there you go. Um, so I made one of these for each of my daughters and then promptly took one back. Wow, one of them was pregnant and hasn't returned it yet. So anyway, I think this is my daughter Laura's ranunculus. So I absolutely love this. I do modify the sleeves on the ranunculus pattern just to suit my mood and and the yarn and how I plan to wear it. I also don't use the cast on suggested in the pattern. That said, on my very last one I made, I did decide, you know what, it's time to figure out this cast on. So I did. So that said, I think you can really use any kind of stretchy cast on for that sweater. Um, and this is another hugely popular sweater that is, uh, a fun, fun, quick knit. This is The Love Note by Tim Can Knits. And I knit this out of Periwinkle Sheep, I believe. Um, a single ply held with the mohair of the same color. And it made this just stunning, like silvery purple color. Just purple's not really a color I wear too often. Um, but I really did enjoy making this pattern. However, in hindsight, if I were to make this again, I would not do the provisional cast on. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that was. Um, I'm sure there was a purpose, but for me, uh, the sweater actually fit fine. And I think I would just cast on with the number of stitches that the pattern uh, decreases to and skip the provisional cast on because I had a I didn't have trouble making the provisional cast on at this point, but I did have trouble unpicking the provisional cast on and getting, I think I had my stitches twisted and I had to go back and fix that. So if anyone asks me about making a love note, I usually suggest that they don't do the provisional cast on. And I haven't had anyone come back and, you know, be upset or anything. Um, too tight bind off on the sleeves. Didn't go back and fix it. Probably one of the reasons I don't wear this as often as I could. Um, but it's beautiful and soft and drapey and the color is actually gorgeous. It's funny. I think I can see where I picked up stitches for the sleeve. And now I usually go up a needle size if I'm knitting a small circumference, but I didn't here. And I can tell that, you know, it didn't affect the fit at all, but I can see that my gauge changed a little bit, which ended up not being a big deal. But this is a really fun knit. Highly recommend. I don't know if this is a free pattern on Ravelry or not. I don't think so. But yeah, another fun one. Alrighty. Oh, and I've worn this, I think, in an episode, but haven't talked about it. So I've probably talked about all these uh, sweaters in previous episodes in, in greater detail if you want to go back and watch, which I highly encourage that you do. This is also by Amy Christopher's, and this is the Felix pullover. And I don't know if you can see, so I have a little bit of turquoise yarn here to just indicate the back of the sweater, but there's a beautiful pattern, lace pattern in the raglan increases, you know, where the raglan increases are built into the, to the lace pattern. So this is a fun, quick knit done on fairly large needles. I love the neckline and you know, the length of this sweater for me is perfect. So it's kind of my go-to sweater to measure for the length if I want a cropped sweater. Uh, and this one is made out of Let Lopey, which was my first experience. You know, I watch a lot of pod podcasts, so I hear other podcasters talk about different yarn. I'm like, oh, I want to try that. I want to try that. And this is really inexpensive yarn. Um, and some people just find this unbearably scratchy. Now, I don't wear this. Well, I have worn it next to skin because I have worn it with a short sleeve uh, t-shirt underneath. And it's, it's really fine. It really doesn't bother me, but I know it can be scratchy for some people. So keep that in mind. Comes in a gazillion colors. 
super affordable. Um, you can order it straight from, I think it's Istex, in Iceland. Um, I think the shipping's pretty reasonable, but you can also order this online in, in multiple places. I think I bought this from the Woolly Thistle, which is one of my favorite online stores. I think it's in New Hampshire. They do not have a brick and mortar store, but they um, sell a lot of woolly wools. Most of them imported from Europe and the UK. Corinne, who is the owner, is Scottish, and she just loves woolly wools. And it's where I buy my Rauma phenol garn. Um, they have tuku wool. They just have a fabulous selection. They have a great website. Highly recommend if you want to buy some woolly wools online, visit thewoollythistle.com. So yeah, I can't say really much more about this sweater. It was a pretty straightforward knit. That said, I did have to draw myself a little picture, and I do this sometimes if there's no chart and I can't visualize where the yarn overs are happening. You know, I can't visualize the lace pattern. So I had to draw myself a little picture so I could see where the yarn overs were happening and where the, um, yeah. So anyway. That's just a little tip. Draw yourself a little picture so you can kind of visualize where the increases are happening on either side of the raglan on, with the markers, you know? I don't know. Does that make any sense? Anyway, draw yourself a picture, indicate where the markers are, and indicate where the yarn overs are. And I usually indicate those by a little circle so that you can kind of get a visual so that you make fewer mistakes because I did make a mistake that I don't think I caught it until it, the garment was done and it really... I think it was in the back. I think I missed a yarn over and I probably just added a stitch when I separated for the sleeves, but it turned out fine. Absolutely fine. Don't give it a second thought. Super lightweight, uh, very warm. And I absolutely, this is a go-to sweater in the winter because it, it looks great with my high-waisted linen skirts. And I just wear like tights and combat boots. Um, there is a store and I don't know if they have them all over the world. They might called Uniqlo. U-N-I-Q-L-O, and they sell these, they're called Heat Tech, um, very lightweight, thin, synthetic uh, material that keeps you warm. So I usually wear one of those in black underneath this. I wear those all winter. If um, I didn't mention it already, which I didn't think I did, we live in New York, just outside of New York City, so we do get winter here. And this winter, the Farmer's Almanac says we are going to get snow, so I'm very, very excited about that. <laughs> here we have another ranunculus. Now this, this I believe I use the cast on indicated in the pattern because look how wide that neckline is, which is absolutely beautiful. I love a ballet neckline. Um, this was made with one strand, holding one strand of mohair. And this was definitely, I definitely altered this garment to kind of suit my purposes. I made this to wear to my son's wedding with a, a silk dupioni skirt in the same color. And I absolutely loved it. There was a lot of drama <laughs> surrounding this whole situation, which you can probably listen to in a previous episode. I think it might have been episode number six. And, um, yeah, but I ended up, it ended up working out. I wore it. I was really comfortable. It was perfect for the weather. It was lightweight. Um, I, there was just a lot of satisfaction in wearing something that I made. So, and I, yeah, like I said, I loved the color. This is Biche Bouche Le Petite Silk and Mohair, I think it's called, because they have Le Gros Silk and Mohair, which is a, like a DK mohair that's up also gorgeous. I did an I-cord bind off on the sleeves and originally there was an I-cord bind off on the bottom of it because I was just tucking it into a skirt. I took that out with help from Karen from Pick Up Every Stitch and I added some ribbing. So just to, you know, kind of dress it down a little bit so I could end up wearing it with jeans and, you know, I wanted it to get some wear. This pattern, I have to say the armpits, the way they have you do um, pick up stitches, and separate for the sleeves just leaves you with some great underarms. So, and I think it's a technique you could really use on any sweater. So yeah, it was difficult to knit with one strand of mohair on such big needles. I'm pretty sure I went down a needle size or two, 
most of my projects are in my Ravelry, so if you want some details, you can go there. Um, and I did make some decreases in the body because I knew I was going to tuck it into the skirt. So I absolutely love the color. I love that I have this memory of my son's wedding. So yeah, and of course we all know how popular, um, how much I like that powder. All right, so I'm excited to wear this one again. I can't wait for the weather to change. I'm not a fan of summer, never have been. Um, I'm from California originally, and we have pretty you know temperate summers. You know, we might have a couple days, a couple warm days. We don't really have, we don't have air conditioning out there. Um, we have, you know, the fog rolls in in San Francisco and it cools everything off. And um, yeah, and then we moved to Texas and I just, that was when I started to hate summer. <laughs> Sorry, I just do not like the hot weather. Um, this is the Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter. Another Caitlin Hunter pattern. And I, this was in my... Ravelry library. I bought the pattern long ago, probably above my pay grade when I when I bought it. Um, so I'm glad I waited to cast this on. And I made this earlier this year. Yeah, earlier this year I finished it. And oh, I saw this on Knitting Traditions, the Knitting Traditions podcast, who is Inga who lives in Norway and she made a beautiful version. I absolutely loved it. She's a beautiful young lady, um, very prolific knitter, makes just a ton of garments, really fun to listen to if you need another podcast. She's actually a physician. Uh, I don't know where she finds the time to uh, be a doctor and to do so much knitting. Um, so yeah, I was really inspired by her rendition of the Nordiska and I'm, I think she used Rama Finelgarn which I also used purchased at the Woolly Thistle um, and I, I love the colors I chose it's actually a really dark navy it might come off as black but um, yeah and this sweater is actually a little bit on the big side for me that said I think I chose the right size because it has the right amount of positive ease so that's another thing is to really, as you know, my yarn journey kind of, or my knitting journey kind of went on, I figured out how much ease I prefer, which is not a lot. I like things to be fitted. So this has like 10 to 12 inches of positive ease. So it's definitely roomy. Um, I love the cable in the raglan, the cable detail in the raglan. Absolutely gorgeous. Was a really, was a pretty quick knit. Um, I think I did a good job of picking up stitches for the neckline. It's not too deep of a V. Um, the sleeves are, you can tell, they you separate for the sleeves really low on the body, which doesn't bother me. I probably can't wear it with, um, you know, with a snug coat, but yeah, absolutely love it. Follow the pattern. I think I added a couple of inches to the body and a couple of inches to the sleeves. They were supposed to be a little bit more cropped. Um, yeah, and this is another woolly wool. I don't find it itchy. I think I've washed this a couple times. Um, very affordable, comes in just stunning colors, tons of colors. So definitely highly recommend this. And, you know, another podcast, I was definitely influenced by, you know, the... Um, Skein Deer Knits. If you haven't watched Ellie from Skein Deer Knits, she, she loves Rama Finelgarn, and that was another, you know, she definitely inspired me to give that a try. So, yeah. Um, oh, let me have one of my favorites. I finished this maybe in February of this year, and this is another petite knit. It is, and here's one of my hairs. It is the No Frills sweater by Petite Knit, and it's a really straightforward raglan pullover. This is made out of Biche Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool and Rowan Kinsel Haze in the color Pearl, which is one of my favorite colors. It's it's not white, it's not ivory, it's not cream, it's not too yellow. It's just a, it's a really neutral color. And it's one of my favorite mohairs. I think I bought that online at Yarn.com, which is Webs, which they have a brick and mortar store in Northampton, Massachusetts that I've actually been to. It's a fun store. It's a really big store. Um, it's a it's a nice choice for, you know, if you want to buy yarn online, if you don't live near a local yarn shop, they do have a big selection. So, and they do have a good discount. 
So I do uh, recommend them. Let's see if I have anything really else to say about this. This is a really straightforward knit. It's soft. It's very sweatshirty. Loved the pattern. Would recommend this probably for a new knitter. Uh, there are short rows in the back. But yeah, absolutely loved this. Really fun knit. There are some decreases in the sleeves. But pretty straightforward. Not much else to say about this one, except for that I love it. So I didn't really know what to do with all my sweaters. I didn't know how to store them. I had them in um, plastic bins, um, lidded, you know, with the lid underneath my bed. But that made it hard to see my sweaters, and so I wasn't wearing them as often as I could have. But my daughter moved into a new house recently, and they, the previous owners left behind some furniture. And there was this like stereo cabinet, glass front stereo cabinet. So I, I'll take a picture of it and have Kim insert it, but it just has been fabulous for my knits. So very happy. It was free. You know, I don't care that it, you know, maybe the color of the wood doesn't match my decor, but it is wood. So I'm very thrilled to have that. This is also a recent knit. This is the Floodlight Tea by Tannis Lavely, who is... Oh gosh, I can't remember the name of her yarn company right now, but this is also in my Ravelry. Um, that said, I did not use her yarn. I use, this is Pearl again, by, uh, it's Rowan Kids Sell Hayes in the color Pearl. And the wool is Jilted Rose by Bull and Vine Yarns, which is Kristen Lair's yarn company. And I did not alternate skeins and it just, I only had one skein, so I could have, you know, divided it into two balls. I didn't do that because um, even though, you know, Kristen probably recommends that you alternate skeins because her yarn is hand dyed, I feel like her dyeing is so consistent that I didn't need to. So that was awesome. I did run out of yarn. So the last couple inches are done just in the, in the kid's cell case. So it was a design choice because I definitely needed some length. This was, you know, this pattern had some interesting increases. I don't know if I made it again, if I would use the same type of increase because they are visible to me, which, you know, maybe was a design choice. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of I-cord. There's I-cord around the neck and the arms and the, not the hem. I just bound off normally on the hem. And then there's some I-cord uh, ties in the back. But yeah, I'm looking forward to wearing this again when the weather cools off a little bit. All right, um, this is probably my most favorite knit to date. This is my April Cardigan by Petite Knit, and I absolutely love the color. I love the design. I love the buttons. I love the fit. It fits really well. I'm pretty sure I made the second size again. Um, it has... It starts out with a saddle shoulder and then the only part about this I didn't enjoy and I do talk about this in a previous episode is I had to make increases on both the right and the wrong side for a little while and that for me was fiddly I struggled with that I didn't enjoy it same thing on my dingley doll by Isabel Kramer but by then I was like eh, just you know grin and bear it and stick with it and then there's some just regular uh, traditional increases uh, regular increases here which makes this nice S-shaped uh, line of increases that actually fits really well. So I, uh, Melissa from Knitting the Stash recommended um, or kind of expands on that whole S-shaped curve uh, for raglan sweaters and it just made sense to me. So now I'm not as grumpy about, about doing those increases on both the right and the wrong side. This is an instance where I did pick up um, a different number of stitches around the neckline than the pattern suggested, but I counted and I put stitch markers where my stitches were. So I knew that I had about the right, um, the same number of pickup stitches, like between this area and this area. So, you know, although I didn't have the exact same number of stitches to mirror the left and right, um, it was close enough. So that was 
and kind of a little bit of a, a learning, you know, something a more experienced knitter might do. So I didn't want to spend time, you know, picking up stitches over and over and over again to get the exact number that the pattern suggested. That said, I did a tubular bind off and it looks beautiful, but it was a hassle. Um, you know, I had this like 12 foot long piece of yarn on my needle. In hindsight, I could have skipped the mohair, which would have made it a little bit easier. This is made out of Stannis Garn Sunday yarn, which is pretty budget friendly. Absolutely love the color. I loved the yarn. It was, there were no knots. I had no issues with the yarn at all, would definitely use it again. And I also use the Stannis Garn Tin Silk Mohair. And this is the color that the designer also chose for hers. So absolutely love the color. Cannot wait to wear it. Um, didn't really have a chance to wear it before the weather got warm. But I'm thinking I'm going to make a dress to wear this over and maybe wear it to rain back. So I don't know. Yes, I absolutely love, love, love the sweater. Highly recommend for if you're looking for a classic cardigan pattern. I love her patterns. They're very clear. Um, had no, no trouble at all with this one. So oh, I think my pile's going to fall over. All right. Sip of tea. Mm. All right, which leads me to what I'm wearing and this little cutie, which is, this was number two, this was number one. <laughs> These are my Salty Air Tees, and I talk a lot about this one in episode number nine. So if you want more details, go ahead and watch episode number nine. That's it. I just absolutely loved knitting this. This is in Pearl Soho Linen Quill. Uh, this is the rosewood pink color, and this is the mountain blue bird color. And I used just over a skein, actually, to make each of these. And I highly recommend the pattern. Very uh, easy lace pattern. You uh, put stitch markers between the lace repeats, so, you know, you can't get too far off. And um, I don't think I used, yeah, I didn't use the recommended cast-on, which was an alternating cable cast-on. I just used my... German twisted cast on or old Norwegian cast on, which I pretty much tend to use for everything. Really fun knit. Knit it to pattern, I believe, lengthwise and everything. So I didn't do actually the last section of uh, lace repeat because my yoke was as long as the schematic uh, suggested it be for my size. So yeah, that's the only modification I made. I made that in both. And I did a tubular bind off on the hem on this one and on the sleeves which, you know, I could have just used, um, on this one I used Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off and went down to half the needle size that I was using for the, for the ribbing. So um, I was using a three for the ribbing, went down to one and a half, and that ended up being perfect. So yeah, those are my two recent knits, my most recent knits. And I'm still working on my Dingley Dell by Isabel Kramer, which is part of our Mayak uh, Isabel Kramer cow that ends August 31st and this is about how much I have on the body I tried it on today I put it on my knitting barber cords which are these purple silicone hollow cords that are fabulous and if you don't have some I highly recommend they make putting your stitches on hold so easy yeah I tried it on I absolutely love the color it's definitely not a summer sweater for me so I'm kind of debating on making the sleeves at least three quarters, I think. And I really don't know what to do about the length. Um, Isabel's version is pretty long. Even though she's a small person, she must have a long torso or she likes um, a lot of uh, length in her sweaters. I think she might wear like low-waisted jeans. So I don't know what I'm going to do about the length of the sweater. I don't think I'm going to crop it because, you know, there's this deep V. So it just, you know, it, I think it would look a little bit like a belly shirt if I cropped it. So not going to do that. Definitely will do the ribbing. Although I have to say the edge of this neckline is absolutely beautiful and could definitely be kind of left as is. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really liking this. So I really got to get busy because I've got a lot of knitting to do before the end of our cow. So I think I mentioned that we're having um, another Zoom knit night tonight, so I usually don't get any knitting do done during those, but that we'll see. But I've been working on it diligently. I do have some other projects going, but 
um, I really would like to finish this on time since, you know, I figure it's our, it's our cow. I should probably finish on time. So, um, yeah, so that is not all the sweaters I've made, but it's all the sweaters I have handy and yeah, I hope that kind of helped, you know, kind of my, my talk about my knitting journey a bit about making mistakes about giving myself, you know, freedom to make changes to a pattern. Um, I have talked a little bit about the fact that I am a process knitter. So for me, I do sometimes want to knit something that I know is not going to work in my wardrobe that I might feel self-conscious wearing that, you know, I think might be beautiful on someone else. Um, so I really have had to uh, curate my, you know, my choices because I want to make things that I want, I want to wear and that I feel comfortable in. So, you know, there's this knitting craft, that I love to explore and experiment with, but then there is this, you know, knitted object that I would like for it to have some use. So, yeah, so that has been definitely part of my knitting journey. It's not just about the product for me. It's definitely about the learning process. So, yeah, um, still early in the day here. I think it's almost lunchtime. I managed to make it through the episode by myself, <laughs> although Kim was missed. Um, so I hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time for episode number 10, which will air early in September. Like I said, Kim is on vacation. I wish I was on vacation. She's going to a private island in Maine that has no electricity and running water, which would not be my husband's first choice. So. That is not a vacation that I could talk him into, but it sounds like a lot of fun. And I know she gets a lot of knitting and, um, you know, knitting done. Her husband does some amateur photography. They do some boating and swimming and it just sounds idyllic. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit jealous, but we are going to Texas the end of August to stay with my grandchildren because my daughter and her husband are going to a wedding out of the country. So I'm excited to, uh, you know, hang out with them and it's something that we don't really get to do very often. So I'm really excited about that. Um, yeah. And so we'll have a lot of stuff going on in the fall. So check back in with us. And if you liked this episode, please like, and subscribe down below. If you'd like to become a member of the channel and support what we're doing, you can click the join button. It doesn't um, mean that you've joined. It just means it just gives you some more information. There's a little informational video about what it means to be a member of our channel. So we're about to hit 10,000 subscribers, I think today. So we're pretty excited about that. Logo in the works, almost ready. Uh, my, my family still doesn't understand why anyone would want our logo on a coffee mug, but that's okay. And yeah, so we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay. Here goes. <laughs> this is another. Oops, I should have looked this up. <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll remember. I think I did it, and I think that the audio worked, and I don't think the battery ran out. Oh my goodness! I should probably look that up now and make sure that worked. Hmm. I think I'll do that. <laughs> and I hope it's not crooked. I'm Okay, we're back. <laughs> and